And welcome everyone to another special ETBU Sportsnet production. I'm Kenneth K. Rock Klein, and this semester we are continuing to unveil our all-time Tigers players from the 20th anniversary of the ETBU football's uh, tradition, as this would have been ETBU's football, ETBU football's 20th season, of course. We are unveiling the all-time Tigers, showcasing the best of the best through interviews and stories both on and off the field. Now, this week, of course, we are unveiling our linebacking corps. I'm a little bit excited for this one because I am pleased to be joined by uh, a two-time All-ASC selection as well as an All-American linebacker and a guy who has the single season record for most tackles in a career. And he only did that in two years, of course. That, of course, being Ty Parsons as well. Ty, first off, uh, congratulations, Honor, and welcome to the show. Yeah, thanks, man. This, this is really something I was looking forward to as you are unveiling. So to be to be on the list, that was really neat. Yeah, absolutely. Now, let me just say, first off, before we get going, I'm glad you're on the other side of the screen and I'm over here. So that way I didn't have to worry about you spearing me, grabbing me through the camera. And all. <laughs> no, <I'm> no. Not... <laughs> we're allies. We're allies, man. No, no, <laughs> no, that's good. I'm just saying if I were an opponent, I wouldn't want to mess with you, especially when you will overlooking me trying to figure out the offense as well. We'll get into your football career in just a moment, Ty. But first and foremost, um, you know, it's been a couple of years since you graduated from ETBU. Just give us an update of what, how things have been going for you, what you majored in, and what you're currently doing as of now. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I came in in 2016 um, at ETBU as a junior and graduated uh, with a degree in business administration and an emphasis in accounting. And... The reason I did that, because it was a marketable degree. Um, so far, I've been in sales and did that for about a year and a half and decided that wasn't for me. So uh, I'm kind of taking a step back right now and deciding kind of what path I want to take. But in the meantime, uh, I'm helping out at Dallas Christian, uh, where I went to school. And so I actually just got back from a cross country meet and I've got a uh, middle school football game to go to here after this interview. <laughs> Yeah, sure. Well, uh, hopefully uh, we get this one out of the way so you can get ready to. You know, no, we, we, we have time. No, absolutely. Uh, so, Ty, obviously, um, you know, like you said, you came here as a junior in ETBU. It's, it, you kind of had an interesting journey coming to ETBU as well because you had played in the other couple of colleges. Give us a little brief recap of how you were able, what, what happened, and then how you found out about ETBU. Yeah, yeah. So uh, long story short, uh, I'll give it to you. Um, so out of high school, I went to Georgetown up in Washington, D.C. Um, and was there for a semester. Uh, financially, it didn't work out. So then I went to the University of Central Arkansas as a sophomore. And we had a coaching staff change from the fall to spring. Um, new coach came in, wasn't a huge fan of me. Um, so then had to transfer, went to Harding. So this is now my third stop in three years. And uh, redshirted there, and uh, things didn't work out there either. Uh, so after a year and a half, I was like, I, you know, what do I do at this point? And uh, my cousin actually played softball at Letourneau. And so I, I was looking for schools kind of in that area. I have family in Paris. I'm from Rowlett, which is in the Metroplex. And uh, I saw that ETBU had a football team. I uh, really didn't know much about ETBU at the time. Um, called up. It was Coach Smith and Coach Herbal at the time. And uh, they said, yeah, you know, you'll be in our rotation getting to play, which is what I wanted to hear, you know, after all those years of not playing. And uh, so came in for a visit and was enrolled in January of 2016. Actually got to do track and field with Coach Prather. Shout out. And uh, pretty much rolled from there. So it was really a big blessing. It's kind of weird how it worked out, you know, just having a family member that was at a school in Longview. Yeah, and absolutely. Kind of weird how we have these ETBU eternal connections as well. But, um, you know, throughout your career, even though it was only two years, you had uh, over 200 tackles and you were the first player uh, to have over 100 tackles in a single season since Greg Washington, who, of course, was also on the linebacking core of the team as well. Uh, your senior season, 135 tackles as well. Talk about that senior year, uh, finding out that you were able to break not only the ETBU record, but also the ASC record as well. Yeah, uh, just going into the season. So building off that junior year where I had, you know, 100 tackles, and that was a really cool accomplishment, um, being up there with Greg Washington, uh, who's an awesome guy. I, I reached out to him. I'll, I'll kind of talk about that later. But uh, 
I, my goal was is was to break his single season record, which was I believe 122. And so as the season kept progressing, it became pretty apparent that I was going to break that record before our season was over. So uh, once I had eclipsed that record, I started looking up what the ASC record was, and I saw that it was it was going to be close, but I had a shot at it. So yeah, I mean, I didn't really have a goal for that um, until the last three or four games of the season, to be honest. Yeah, no, absolutely. Obviously, of course, you were able to break the record as well. And uh, just kind of watching you go about it, and big honor, of course, to have for you to have the record at ETBU as well. Now, 2016, of course, your first year, uh, you had the opportunity to play under head coach Scotty Walton. That team finished 7-3, and three, was ranked 14th in the nation. Of course, the big marquee game, not necessarily uh, the best game for <laughs> perspective because it was like 64-62. The offense kind of took over. But when you look back at the game films, it was really some of the mo some of the best plays in the game were from a defense perspective. I can remember one time during that game, you broke through the tackle, you immediately had a second, and I don't know what kind of celebration you were doing and all the robo dance and all that. But that game in particular, just kind of talk about that, kind of talk about the rivalry and, and just the poise that you had in that game, especially when you had a hit like that. Yeah, uh, so the the Louisiana College rivalry um, was obviously something that was new to me when I first came in. Um, but us being millennials and being on social media, um, pretty quickly it became apparent that there was sort of some sort of rivalry. So you saw it all all week long. There was like an ETBU hate week and uh, LC hate week type thing, and and. Uh, so you saw that kind of building up. It's like, okay, this is, this is something. So, uh, you know, then we, we get in the game and it's sure enough a shootout, which no defense wants to be in, you know, we want to shut them down, but it was. And uh, so the whole time their student section was being loud and rowdy, which is awesome. I love that in college football. And I got a sack on third down <laughs> and uh, I was just being a spaz. I guess my whole point was I was trying to say, I can't hear you, but <laughs> there was a lot of hand motion that was kind of robotic and I look back on it now and it was definitely hilarious and embarrassing at the same time. <laughs> no, I mean, anytime, I mean, for the moment you can do something which you want to make a point, but when you look back, it's like, Oh my God, <laughs> what do you think? But, but that was really cool to see. And of course that game did end up coming down to a defensive play, trying to stop the two point conversion from uh, your teammate, Jeremiah Simpson. So Obviously, yeah. as I said, high scoring offense game, but there were some key defensive plays that proved to be the difference as well. Now, you know, in your time, you were a two time all ASC selection as well as an all American as well. The fact that even though you play two years for you to be a part of this all time Tigers team, especially you know, with the other linebackers that you're having to share the honor with as well. What does that mean to you from your perspective to hear the, the name Ty Parsons being mentioned on this list? Yeah. Um, so first and foremost, obviously, uh, you know, it's a huge honor um, just to be mentioned in, in that list. But, uh, you know, I, I think about all those years where um, coaches said I wasn't I wasn't good enough or, you know, you're going to be four string or whatever. Um, fully getting to, to realize all of those goals that I had originally set for myself going into college. Um, you know, to achieve all those things and then now be listed with some awesome guys, you know, uh, like Caleb Taylor, who I played with, um, who was a stud and then AC who I got to play with for a year. And, you know, his, his senior year was phenomenal too. Also being named an all American. Um, it's just awesome for me. I'm, I'm a huge history guy. So to be listed in there with that tradition and with those guys like Greg Washington, who, you know, we had that All-American board in the locker room and seeing him, you know, two-time All-American up on that board, uh, it's pretty special now when I go back to see my name up there along with his. Absolutely. And you talked, of course, we talked a little bit about the 2016 season where you were uh, ha under the helm of Scotty Waldman, who had one year as a head coach. But as of right now, Co Coach Walden, of course, making a name for himself as an interim head coach at Southern Myth, uh, Mississippi University as well. What, was, what were some of the things that you learned under him as well? And what are you seeing with him that he is applying to the, his current situation right now? 
Yeah, um, I think first and foremost, anybody that's been around Coach Walden um, at all uh, is energy. I mean, you know, you've got some coaches that kind of fake it for the camera or fake it for the spotlight. And then you've got some coaches that are just very mellow and low energy the whole time. Uh, Coach Walden was like, I, I, this is a bad comparison, but like, you know, you have like a chihuahua that's just oh, always going, always going. I mean, he is that high energy uh, spark, man. I mean, I, there's never been another player, another coach, strength coach, you name it, that I've been around that uh, was just all go all the time. And uh, like, I can still remember we were doing a weight workout one time and he wasn't even warm and he went in and did a hang clean of 300 pounds. I mean, and he's not huge in stature. So, you know, I, at the time he was actually my age that I am now as our head coach, which is crazy to think about, but uh, you know, he just always practiced what he preached and he went out and lived it, you know, which, there's a lot of coaches, whether it be they physically can't do it or whatever the case may be. But I mean, he, he walked the talk, you know? Absolutely. Uh, so what about your teammates? What are some of the memories that you had with your teammates playing at HBU? And do you, are you still able to keep in touch with any of them to this day? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, at, at a surface level, uh, there's several that I follow on social media, but there's, there's definitely a few, um, that I keep in touch with and that I've seen from time to time. And, you know, unfortunately this year we, we didn't have a game to come back to, but that's always a blast getting to see, you know, the, the, all the old Tigers come back and watch a game together and maybe go out and hang out afterwards. But uh, for sure, Drew, uh, Drew Smith, um, you know, we, we had a very similar story. Uh, in fact, we played against each other in high school and then he went D1, D2, and D3, just like me. So we actually played against each other at each conference that we transferred down from. So uh, coming in together was really cool. Uh, so Drew Smith and then uh, Caleb Taylor, uh, who, like I've mentioned before, uh, he's a nurse out in, in Tyler now. And, and so we try and stay in touch, you know, on a semi-regular basis. So those are two guys that I really enjoy talking to. And then uh, RJ as well, um, when he had his, his, uh, professional stint over in Turkey. I tried to stay in touch with him since I had also been in Europe that previous season. Yeah. Talk about that as well. Cause you had an opportunity to play uh, overseas uh, in Germany, of course, as well. Talk about that experience of getting to at least play uh, professionally, even though it's not the typical NFL or what you would kind of expect, but just an opportunity to know that you were on the professional side. Right. Right. Yeah. So, uh, you know, thanks to ETVU, thanks to that opportunity, um, I was fortunate to have a great senior year. And the coach over at one of those teams in Germany uh, found me and because I was nominated for the, the Gagliardi. And uh, they had a linebacker that, that dropped out late. And so they contacted me the end of February. And a week or so later, I'd signed a contract and was on a plane over to Amber. So uh, in regards to, to the opportunity, I, mean, I got to go to six different countries. I got to continue to play football. Um, it wasn't NFL money, but I got to be paid and, and live over there rent free and, and see a lot of, of different things that I otherwise probably would have seen, especially, you know, at 24 years old. Absolutely. Uh, ETBU, of course, being a faith-based university, uh, how has God uh, used your time from ETBU to help you out to where you're at at this point? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I, I've always been determined and, and hardworking, but I, I'm not going to lie and say that there weren't times that I thought about quitting through that journey and uh, getting to actualize those goals because of you know, where God placed me, um, it definitely strengthened uh, my resolve. And I think that would have been really tough if I never had gotten to actualize those goals. So, you know, I think God put me in the right place at the right time. And uh, because of that, you know, I'm still in some capacity getting to stay around football. And, and I, it seems like I have a little bit more credibility because of the way that I got to finish up at ETBU. So... Right. Yeah, I'm super thankful. No, absolutely. Okay, so 
time to put your recruiting skills to the test, if you will. Uh, so you have a high school football player um, and you're trying to convince them that they should go to ETPU. What would you tell them and why? Yeah. Uh, so, you know, it's, I'm going to sound like a, a broken record, but um, you know, just the opportunity. Uh, so many people are caught up as was, was I, you know, at, at 18 and 17, it was D1 or bust, right? D1 or bust. You know, if, if you're not playing on Saturdays on ESPN, what do you do? You know, and uh, it took me going through that journey to realize at the end of the day, I don't care whether it's JUCO, NAI, D3, if you're putting in that much work, you want to actualize it and play. And so I think there's a lot of guys that are really talented that get lost in the shuffle at the D1, at the D2 level. And there's a ton of talent. I mean, I was just thinking about this earlier. Um, so as I mentioned earlier, Drew was a, was a D1 transfer, Drew Smith. Um, Caleb Taylor was a D2 transfer. Uh, RJ, who was on the list at, at D-line, he was a D2 transfer. Uh, the Oliver brothers, I believe both transferred from McMurray. Uh, I can go through the list and you've got all these guys. In fact, there's a guy that, that transferred out and he's now playing at D2, uh, Chase Soika, who's a great receiver. Um, there's guys up and down that list that are talented enough to, to play at, at bigger schools, but you know, sometimes they just get lost in the shuffle. And uh, so from a football standpoint, you're going to get to play, you're going to get to play against great talent, great quality. You know, UNHV is, year in, year out, one of the, the top teams that we play against, you know, Harden Simmons, uh, still have great rivalries. Uh, my parents never missed a game, which was awesome. You know, um, two years, got to travel all around Texas and the surrounding states. And uh, I just think that's so important. So from a football standpoint, just getting to play is awesome. And then from an educational standpoint, you know, we have all of these different avenues where you can go in and succeed. And I went the business route. I know Caleb Taylor could tell you all about nursing, which we have a, a top nursing program in the, in the state. Um, you know, education, Drew Smith could tell you about that. We have a, a, a great, you know, uh, what's the word for it? Teaching, teaching and uh, educational system in regards to you know, teaching and coaching. And I look at all the guys that are continuing to coach and go that avenue. Um, we have several guys that, at the top high school and college level that started at ETBU. Absolutely. Uh, one final question, of course. Uh, obviously, we're continuing to deal with all the circumstances around, specifically with this uh, pandemic we're going around here. But for those that uh, obviously are still kind of going through this process at ETBU as well, you having graduated a few years back uh, and getting to understand you know, the life in the real world, and especially traveling around and abroad. Uh, do you have any words of wisdom that you like to leave with us? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I, I, obviously I got some of these questions earlier, so I had a chance to look them over. And, and one thing that's just really been on my mind lately um, with COVID, with, you know, we've got an election coming up, with, with just all this uncertainty and all this anxious uh, nerves and, and energy, you know, is one – God is always in control, no matter what. And two, you're in control of your individual circumstances. You know, you can't control the weather. You can't control, you know, all of these exterior things, but you can control your attitude. You can control how you treat other people. And more than anything right now, we need people to be more like Jesus and treat your neighbor, treat your friend, your coworker, how they want to be treated. You know, and as long as, long as we do that, we'll be all right. Absolutely. Well, Ty, I know you got a middle school game to attend to. So thank you so much for taking your time and uh, looking forward to seeing you on the football field when the season uh, finally does resume down. In yeah. Day. So hopefully you can get. Make Absolutely. A schedule. And once again, congratulations, of course, on making this list. Hey, thank hey, before Before I finish, I just want to say thank you, man, um, to you and Adam personally. Um, and, and the rest of any of the guys that do anything with social media and, and the department. Um, enough people don't realize what y'all do behind the scene actually gets us the awards and the accolades and the exposure. Uh, so y'all are really the unsung heroes. And I really appreciate what y'all do. Y'all meant a lot to me. Absolutely. Well, we're glad that we could help out and uh, 
Looking forward to having you around. That is Ty Parsons. I'm Kenneth the K-Rock Klein. Tune in next time as we will unveil our next all-time Tigers player. You'll find out who it is next time.